Cummins recommends the use of a positive flow de-aerating cooling system containing a top tank with expansion area, fill line, vent line, and vent tube. This system aids in purging air from the cooling system during initial coolant fill and during operation. This system also provides a positive flow of coolant at the water pump during all engine operating conditions. The ISC engine has an optional 120 volt 1000 watt block heater located in the threaded port above the coolant inlet shown here. The other fittings do not provide enough clearance to install the heater. The block heater provides for improved engine starting and operation during cold climate conditions. The integral thermostat housing, located in the cylinder block, provides a location for mounting the redesigned single thermostat vertically in the cooling system. The thermostat is piloted at the top and bottom. O-rings at the top and bottom of the thermostat seal the coolant passages. The thermostat controls the flow of coolant through the radiator and through the bypass passage to the water pump. The soft metal material of the thermostat seals off the bypass passage when the engine reaches operating temperature. One of the features of the positive flow de-aerating cooling system is in the way the system fills with coolant. Coolant is added to the reserve volume tank at a rate of 5 gallons per minute or less. This rate allows the coolant to flow through the fill line and fill the cooling system. Coolant flows out of the reserve tank through the fill line to the engine and radiator. The engine fill line is installed in one of the fittings above the water inlet. Flow from the fill line allows the engine and radiator to fill with coolant from the bottom of the system. As the system fills, the coolant pushes the air out of the system through the engine vent line and the radiator core vent tube. The vent line connection contains an orifice to restrict the coolant flow but allow air to escape from the engine. After filling the engine and radiator, coolant fills the reserve tank until the coolant level reaches the bottom of the fill neck. The position of the fill neck limits the amount of coolant in the reserve tank. This room in the tank not only leaves room for expansion but also ensures that the radiator core vent tube remains open. The size and location of the vent line and radiator core vent are important to ensure proper venting of the cooling system. A petcock is installed in the bottom of the oil cooler housing to drain the coolant from the system. Coolant is circulated by the integrally mounted water pump. The water pump impeller and volute for the ISC engine have been increased to improve coolant flow by approximately 30% over previous C-Series engines. The output from the water pump empties into the oil cooler cavity of the cylinder block. This provides the oil cooler with the coolest possible coolant. From the oil cooler cavity, the coolant flows into the lower water manifold. From the lower water manifold, the coolant enters the water jacket cavity. Coolant travels around the liners, carrying combustion heat to the top of the block. The head gasket is orifice to control coolant flow into the cylinder head. Coolant flowing through the single passage per cylinder in the right side of the cylinder head gasket flows to the lower water cavity through drillings in the cylinder head. This flow cools the valve seat and injector area. This coolant continues its flow into the upper cavity of the cylinder head. Coolant flowing through the two passages per cylinder in the left side of the cylinder head gasket flows to the upper water cavity in the cylinder head, crosses over the valve seats and bridges. The coolant in the lower water jacket in the cylinder head connects to the upper water jacket through a series of passages in the cylinder head. The coolant then flows across the cylinder head, down into the upper water manifold in the engine block, and then forward to the integral thermostat housing. 
When the engine is below 180 degrees Fahrenheit, the thermostat is closed, allowing the coolant to bypass the radiator and flow back to the water pump inlet through an internal drilling in the cylinder block. As the coolant temperature increases to 180 degrees Fahrenheit, the thermostat starts to open and coolant flow to the bypass begins to be restricted. When the engine operating temperature increases to 195 degrees Fahrenheit, the thermostat completely opens, blocking the bypass passage to the water pump and opening the outlet to the radiator. The engine must never be operated without a thermostat. Without a thermostat, the coolant recirculates, bypassing the radiator, causing the engine to overheat. With a positive flow de-aerating cooling system, water supply to the inlet side of the water pump is supplied from three sources, the bypass passage, the bottom tank of the radiator, and from the fill line. When the thermostat is closed, the pressure in the block circuit causes the supply to the water pump to flow from the bypass passage. When the engine reaches operating temperature and the thermostat opens, the pressure in that part of the circuit causes the flow to come from the bottom tank of the radiator. The fill line ensures that there is a positive flow of coolant at the water pump inlet at all times. As the water pump increases in speed, more coolant is needed to increase the coolant flow. When the block and radiator circuit cannot supply enough coolant, the low pressure at the pump draws coolant through the fill line. A portion of the coolant flows through the coolant filter mounted on the right side of the engine. The filter head can be mounted in either a rear mount or mid mount position on the mounting pad shown here. The coolant filter helps to maintain the proper additive level in the cooling system and should be changed at the appropriate maintenance interval. The higher pressure coolant in the lower manifold pushes the coolant through the filter. After passing through the filter, the coolant returns to the lower pressure upper manifold. The orifices in the cylinder head gasket provides the pressure differential in the upper and lower manifold to force flow through the filter. The air compressor receives coolant through a line connected to a fitting in the cylinder block near cylinder number 5. Coolant travels to the air compressor cylinder head to cool the compressor. From the compressor, an external line directs the coolant back to the engine cylinder head. Some QSC industrial applications utilize a water jacket aftercooler installed on the engine. This aftercooler receives its coolant supply through an external line plumbed to an opening in the lower water manifold cavity at the rear of the block. Coolant flows from the aftercooler to the upper water manifold cavity at the rear of the block.